Hi guys, it's Andy from This Mode Tech UK. Today we're going to be taking a look and, and doing a review for Transcend. This is the Drive Pro 100. Just want to say a massive thank you uh, to Transcend for sending this along uh, for review. So the, the actual product itself is, is basically a dash cam, a car video recorder. So we've got a Transcend logo up at the top here and it says here it's got a 1.8 aperture for improved low light recording. Built in battery for 30 second recording in case of power failure. Snapshot feature to take still photos while recording video still. Uh, we can record in full HP, uh, sorry, HD 1080p. Uh, again, I'll see it mentions about the aperture uh, enhanced night view. Um, it has got a six glass lens for ultra sharp images and a G sensor for emergency recording. Um, like I said, it's the Drive Pro 100 and it also comes with a free 16 gigabyte um, SD card as well, which is really good to see a micro SD card on that. Um, moving on to this side again, it mentions about the snapshot feature and also it has a 130 degree wide angle glass lens uh, capable of uh, recording in 1920 1080p 30 frames per second. Uh, going back onto this side again, it mentions about the aperture for low light recording and enhanced night view and again obviously about the built in battery. Um, moving on to the back, we've got some uh, additional features and specifications. So it mentions here that it's got a USB 2.0 connectivity, uh, power sources via um, a 12 volt obviously, um, car charger. The video format output is uh, MP4 and there are actually two different versions um, with regards to how the camera connects onto um, the, or in, in the actual car. You've got the adhesive mount which is the version that we have uh, but you've also got a suction mount option as well. So there's two different versions. I think it's something that um, potentially Transcend may have potentially failed on, um, to be honest with you. It would have been nice to see both options available, purely because if you were to move car um, and say the suction cap or the adhesive mount may not be an option, depending on the, on the vehicle. Um, I mean, obviously it is down to personal preference. Potentially the adhesive mount may be too sticky. Um, so when you go to actually remove the adhesive mount, um, it, it sort of lose its sort of um, stickiness, whereas the suction mount would perform potentially better. But I think Transcend really should have included both um, adapters in the actual box. Moving on from that, it has got a 2.4 inch color LCD screen. Again, I'll see it mentions about the 130 degree angle. I'll see you've got a built in microphone and speaker, and it also supports up to 13 languages which is pretty impressive. So let's now take it out of the box and have a look and see what we get inside. Bear with me a moment. Oh, there we go, I just ripped the box. So. Just pop that down over there. Unfortunately, I've just ripped the box, but it is nicely presented. A little bit difficult to get out. Uh, so, that's your 16 gigabyte micro SD card that's bundled. That's the actual camera itself. Also, it comes nicely protected. So, we'll take a look at that in a moment. On the inside, you have got the suction mount. Now, I have actually already used this camera. I've actually done quite a bit of recording with it. Um, and I'll come on to this in a moment. Uh, sorry, not the suction mount, the uh, sticky mount. Oh my on about. Um, and you've also got your um, in-car charger. Now this is a real long cable. It's probably about around about two to three meters in length. Uh, so it should be perfectly plenty to, to route the cable from your uh, cigarette lighter um, around your dash to, to connect into the actual camera. You've also got your quick start guide, which um, I found extremely useful because um, of the, the actual features and various different bits and pieces. You've got warranty information, and then the rest of this is just basically some marketing material about various different Transcend products. So let's now take a closer look at the main item. Okay, so we're going to start by taking a look around the actual camera itself. Obviously, you've got the 2.4 inch screen at the top here. Got your Transcend logo down here, you've got your power button, LED indicator, and some menu option buttons there. Moving it around to this side, you have got your micro SD slot, your emergency button that I'll come on to in a moment. Up at the top, you've got your mount for mounting your um, relevant adapter. It's quite simple to, to actually install. Just push it into place, 
slide it along and it's very very sturdy indeed push that clip which can be a bit tricky and then obviously you can actually take the uh, camera off on this side you've then got your power input from the uh, cigarette lighter cable moving on to the front you've got your six glass lens that can record in 1080p 30 frames per second you have got your microphone up at the top here and you've got your speaker down here with the transcend logo now the actual build quality on this is extremely solid the plastic material that's used obviously is a little bit of it which is shiny um, feels extremely well made very good choice um, on that um, I would imagine that if you were to drop this on the floor it would survive being dropped um, which is also quite good to know um, it's also very lightweight as well it's a very lightweight camera so let's now go and power it on plug the SD card in um, and we can have a look and go through the various different options okay so we, as you can see we've now got the micro SD card in the actual camera so we're just going to go switch it on now as soon as you actually sit, switch the uh, camera on it actually starts to record straight away and the reason for that is to, to obviously start capturing um, the, the actual footage that's required now essentially when you have this plugged into your cigarette lighter and you start the engine um, obviously that then kicks in the power um, with the intention that you're obviously you're going to be driving away so that's why it starts to record so um, up at the top you've got an indicator here that tells you that it's obviously recording and how long the actual um, video has been running and also whether or not it's running in full HD or not uh, up at the top right here you have got a mute button or mute indicator your battery power um, and uh, the I believe that's potentially the amount of photos I'm not quite sure as to or the amount of files um, that are actually uh, capable of storing on this particular SD card. Um, down at the bottom here, if you were to press that button, the power button, you do put the mute on and off. This button here will then list um, the amount, uh, the actual video files, protected files. If you do need to um, use a file for whatever reason, you can actually protect a, a particular file and I'll see a few photos so you can go in and basically play back and see I've got one file there that's actually protected and um, you can actually go through and watch the various different videos back so as you can see there not the most attractive looking one but there we go and I'll see you can then go in and delete that particular file and there we go I'll just try and get another one that's one that I recorded earlier um, and again I'll see how I've got the lock but button on there if you wish you can also go and view uh, the photos so as you can see I've, I've taken a couple here there's one there so we'll just go ahead and delete that one etc so you are able to go and view videos view the the pictures that are actually taken while you're actually driving away in your car in your car you can press that button there to take a picture if you do need to take a picture straight away it's, it's very quick at actually taking the picture um, and from the quality that I've seen from the pictures it's very impressive indeed um, moving on to the settings you have got your resolution so you've got 1080p at 30 frames per second or 720 at 30 frames per second um, obviously there will be an increase in file size if you are using the 1080p version you have got your exposure value now this basically in increases the brightness on the actual camera it's the easiest way of putting it so minus two is going to make it very dark um, which is relatively pretty good for um, bright sunshine um, normally the, the setting that I found was on zero um, and when I was doing my nighttime recording I actually put it up to plus two I'll just stick that back there video length you can actually send, send the uh, length of the video one minute three minute or five I've just used it on the standard three you can also enable or disable a timestamp you can enable or disable voice recording completely loop recording basically means that you with the 15 files that you actually have um, it will basically re-record over the top of the oldest version once the 15 files have been taken up oh, go back on to the settings again uh, volume uh, speaks for itself and uh, the actual volume um, on the actual speaker you have got your G sensor um, now G sensor basically um, detects whether or not you've you've basically been hit while the the camera or the, or the um, car is actually stationary. 
Uh, so you can disable this or you can actually increase the sensitivity. So if you do get hit from behind, for example, or someone crashes into you uh, while you're stationary, not recording, it will automatically come on and record immediately, which is a really cool feature. Um, you've got your auto turn off display, so you can t set when to, to actually turn the display off. Date time setting, date time format, your language option, as I said, there are multiple different languages available. Um, your light frequency, 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Your power off delay, so that's um, the delay it takes to, to actually power the camera off. Uh, information that tells you about the firmware, the amount of space that is actually available on your memory card. And you've also got an option to format your memory card. Um, you've also got an option to upgrade the firmware. Obviously, check out the Transcend website to see if there are any further updates. And you've also got your restore default. Um, so that's about it, really, for the actual camera. It's, it's very, very simple to use with the menu option. Um, so I think it's best now to, to give you my thoughts on the actual camera and show you some actual footage that I've managed to record. First of all, before we get into the review, it's worth mentioning why it's worth investing in a dash cam. And more importantly, a decent dash cam. I've had cheap eBay versions in the past and the build quality, video quality is pretty shocking. And this is the first time that I've had a, a sort of more premium dash cam and the difference is definitely worlds apart. You really do get what you pay for with this type of technology. In addition to that, there is an increasing number of insurance companies that now offer discounts for having a dash cam installed. So when you get in quote for new insurance, or even with your current policy, if you do buy one, always check to see if you can get a cheaper premium. In some cases, I've actually seen this up to 15% in reduction, which over a year to two years actually pays for the camera itself. And also the obvious thing is, if the worst was to happen, no matter how big or small, video evidence can make a hell of a lot of difference. Installation of the Drive Pro 100 is very simple. Attach the adapter and stick it into place. As mentioned before, I would have liked to have seen both types of adapters to be included, but if I had a preference, I would go for the suction cup to make it easier. If I wanted to move the camera, or if I change the vehicle at some point in the future, I haven't got to worry about trying to prise the sticky pad off the actual windscreen and then potentially replacing that if I was to move it to another vehicle or a new location. Once it's installed it stays in place and doesn't cause an issue at all. The long power cable will either be a godsend or a burden depending on if you decide to route the cable around your dashboard or not. The screen on the dash cam is really good with great viewing angles and adjustable brightness with an auto off function so it doesn't distract you. Menu buttons are simple and easy to use with great navigation and after playing with the camera and settings for around 10 to 15 minutes I was used to all the features and settings and could leave it alone to do what it's meant to do. I also like the quick and easy photo option as well which as you'll see now takes decent pictures. I also like the fact that the camera does record over the top of old videos once it hits the uh, final capacity so it means that your memory card won't get filled up and you're also able to then lock files as well so that they don't accidentally get deleted. So on to my thoughts about the quality of the actual footage. As you would have seen, the quality is really good. In fact, it is very impressive, especially on such a bright day. There is very limited sun flare. The detail is also extremely good, and you can actually read the number plates on other cars and other smaller details, so it has massively impressed me. There is a fair amount of reflection from the windscreen, but that is to be expected, and even though the camera is secured to that windscreen, you're going to get quite a bit of vibration coming from that which there isn't really a great deal that can be done about that but I felt that the camera did respond to that extremely well and this was definitely the case when the car stopped at junctions and cars were going fast um, pretty quickly it was extremely impressive even when I was playing around with the different brightness settings the UV rating it performed extremely well um, and even in low light there was a hell of a lot of detail coming from the actual footage and from that camera Nighttime footage was filmed with the brightness or UV level at the highest to show as much detail to you guys as possible and I felt it's done a fantastic job and looks extremely clear especially for nighttime recording. I would definitely recommend adjusting this setting if you are going to be driving at night time um, as it's going to bring up a lot more detail on the actual footage especially if you're going to be in a car for a long period but if you get this camera I'm sure you'll work out your own preferences anyway. Sound recording is also very exceptional as well as you can hear now.
And although there is a bit of distortion from my music, you can clearly make out the music, so I think it performs well enough. I've recorded a lot of footage from the camera and will be uploading a separate video of this footage. If you do feel you wanted to go and watch it, uh, there will be a link down below in the YouTube channel or just above uh, this video if you are watching it on the website. For me, the Drive Pro 100 is an exceptional dash cam and one that I would 100% recommend investing into. Check out nismotech.com to learn more about the actual product and to look at the ratings and award that I've given the camera. Also, don't forget, we have got links down below to where you can actually go and find out the price of the uh, Drive Pro 100 at the moment and also its uh, current availability. So we hope you like the unboxing, review, content of the Transcend Drive Pro 100. And we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thanks for watching our video and we do hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave a comment down below and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and also visit our website nismotech.com where you'll find all the products we've done videos for as well as our current giveaways and the latest tech news and press releases. We hope to see you again soon.